Hey team, welcome back to my channel. The source code for this video is available on my GitHub account, Software Nuggets. Follow the arrows that get you there. The code you're about to see has been tested in versions 14, 15, and 16. Notice I did select version and I'm currently using 16. In example one, you can see here we have some sample XML, data, record, first name, and a social security number. Let us wrap this XML into a variable. Here you can see I've used XML underscore data. The data type is XML, and I've assigned all of this content to this variable name. Let's declare variables for first name and SSN. Let's don't forget the record element as well. Let's now wrap some code around this so we can get this to work. Well, now that we have our variables defined, our XML available, let's now write the program. Let's go ahead and drop in a for loop. Remember, for loop, and for every loop, we have an end loop. Let's make sure we understand how to build the X path. Now, it begins with the root element. The root element is data. Under the data element, we have multiple record elements. So over here, slash data, slash record. So on line 18, X path, slash data, record. So all record will equal, when we're done with this, is from here to here. And because we're doing a for loop, It'll equal this one, and then it'll equal this one, and we'll just work down to the bottom. That's all that means. You may be wondering about why I'm using unnest function. Now this is necessary because we want to transform this data into rows and assign those rows to record. I cleaned up the XML and notice, raise notice, and I'm going to print record. Here you can see record equals record, first name Bob, social security number, and then Bob2 and his social security number. So you can see this loop works getting the data out of this XML. Let's now get Bob and this social security number out of this XML and assign it to these individual variables. Let's now look at line 15 and 16. Now my goal is to get out first name and social security number out of this XML. Now we're gonna be using XPath again and notice this is the path. You can easily see that record, first name gets Bob, record, Social security number gets the social security number. Now, what is this text? Well, that's a common node test. For instance, we can also test for node, element, attribute, comment. Oh, look at the one we're using. Now that matches any text node. You understand everything about this. Now, what does this other part mean? So XPath returns an array. And sub one, that means like, let's take out the first element Let's cast the data type to varchar30. On social security number, I'm using the same path. And notice I'm also getting the first element inside of that array. And let us cast the data type to varchar15. To make it more clear, I've added one additional step. Notice on line six, I said X path value. Notice an array of text. On line 16, notice we have a new variable, X path underscore value. Now the goal is I want to see what the return value of just this part of this full statement is. And notice that it's an array of text. Now when I look at my output, notice I have an array identified by the curly braces. The value for the first one was Bob1 and then the second one. Now you understand why that I have these square brackets on the end of this to get the first element of an array. Here you can see I added two more raised notices. We're gonna print the record and then the individual fields, the variables that we have defined above. Notice we have the array with Bob, then the record is for the entire length of record. And then you can see that we pulled out Bob one and his social security. Now, when we came back on the for loop and got the second record, we got Bob two as our array in X path value. I broke out record and then first and social security number. Now let me just show you one more thing that might hang you up that you'll need to fix. Let's do it. Let's add one more element of this XML and it's gonna be age. So here we have age 23 and then how about 32. Now the data type for age, int. So we have made age with a data type of int to solve this problem. Here you can see on line 20, we added age. I have my path and the data type is integer. But when I run this, notice we get an error and it says syntax error near int. It doesn't like this. So you saw the error and 
how to fix that is to put text in here. So first we get XPath and then we are going to cast it to text and then going to cast it to int. Now this is just a safe way to make that happen. And notice I've used that same technology on each of the other fields and everything works fine. So I would say in general, just say text and then your data type and then it'll all work. Let us begin by creating a table. Now this table will actually store the contents that's going to come out of our XML. Let me explain. So here's our XML. It's in a variable called XML data. Notice toll data list. Well, we know that's the root node for this entire XML document. The second element is toll data. Now toll data represents a collection of toll related data. So you can see here, toll ID, we're defining that as an integer. License plate, we're defining that as a varchar. Booth ID is an integer. And the amount goes up here to toll amount. It's a decimal 10 too. So these data points are going to be preserved into this table here. In the first step, I went over how we're using XPath and I explained to you how we use XPath to parse data and assign it to our variables and using the ability to cast data types. I showed you the error for integers and it also happens on decimals if you don't put text in here. So this is what we call double casting. Then we just do an insert. Insert into the name of the table we created. Here are our column names and here are the fields that we just defined here from line 88 to 91. We're going to stay inside of this loop until this whole file is processed and then at the end I'm going to select star from toll data and we're going to take a look at that data. Are you ready to begin? Let's do it. So let's highlight our command, hit the execute button, and let's see the results. Okay, so everything was successful. And now we're going to come down here and do the select statement, execute. And notice the output of that select statement showed us the 10 rows of data. So this used to be XML, and now it's just regular data in a database. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please leave them below in the comments. I look forward to seeing you back in my next video. Take care.